Here's a new term for you this Pride Month to add to the list of a gazillion others, sologamy. It's a term for those who marry themselves as a form of self-love. It's not a reference to autosexuality, which is the sexual attraction to oneself, though I'm sure there is some crossover there because everyone seems to be a de degenerate freak these days, but I digress. Every time you think we've finally scraped the bottom of the barrel, we find a new rock bottom to hit. Did you know that when you put the words Pride Month together, that the word deem is formed in the middle? I'm not making that up. That's why we need to make sure to reclaim this month for the sacred heart of Jesus, for whom it truly belongs. Because as I've talked about before, God is a family of love at heart. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This pattern is also reflected in all of his creations, such as the Holy Family of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, and of the union of the Church being the Bride of Christ and we its spiritual offspring. That's why our sexuality is so important, because when ordered correctly, Eros actually shows us that higher forms of love do exist. Forms of love which elevate the soul toward the transcendent, toward God himself. To be completely one with your lover, to be completely seen, understood, and cared for, is what our souls yearn to have with God, as we will in heaven. Hence the Bible's constant allusions to weddings, the marriage feast of heaven. Christ's first miracle on earth was at the wedding of, at Cana. As he entered the city on Palm Sunday, he was described as the bridegroom. Or when Christ spoke on hell, he described those dressed up for a wedding, but not allowed in. Heaven is the eternal adoration and worship of God because that is what's right and just and it's what our souls were made for with the source of love itself. So if you can't bend the knee to him on earth for a finite amount of time, how can you do so forever? That's why it's so important to work on your interior soul now to make it ready to endure the flames of purification. And that necessarily means treating others as they ought to be treated because God is relational and so are we. We're not lonely atoms floating around doing our own thing. There's literally nothing we do that doesn't affect someone else. Yes, even inside the bedroom, despite what liberals have been telling us for years. As Christ says, the two greatest commandments from which all else flows is to first love God above all and to love your neighbor as yourself. This is the reason why our society is breaking down along the lines of sex and sexuality, because it's a complete undoing of the basic fabric of reality. Without that key understanding, all these woke headlines we're inundated with every day are even more nonsensical than they already are. Sologamy is the worship of the self, the mantra of hell, which is, I can do it myself, do it my way myself. That's a fatal conceit. And I know these women profiled by CNN are not actually marrying themselves despite the rented venues, white dresses, flowers, and bridesmaids. It's more of a performative action to say, I love me or I deserve love. But again, this is not the giving love that Christ asks for us to have of ourselves and for others. It in fact precludes such true and deathless love by putting a wall between your soul and others made of haughty, selfish wants and desires. While God condescended to become man to save sinners, we refuse to condescend to love those we see as being less than ourselves because of the sin of Satan, pride. So while some women are now opting to marry themselves, those who work in cleanup companies which specialize in homicides, accidents, or unattended deaths are drawing attention to a growing phenomenon of the elderly dying alone. One such account said it's, quote, a regular thing now, divorced single adult living alone who has two kids out of state. We find them three days to a week after death when their adult children finally call. They handle the funeral home over the phone. The house goes through probate. There's no funeral, end quote. That's almost the picture of Dorian Gray. I guess we found it. In the same way Oscar Wilde's 19th century character thought he could cheat death by putting his sins and aging onto a hidden portrait, leaving his face to stay young, we put on solo wedding events and talk about self-love in secular therapeutic ways. Well, the truth of what we're promoting is to be found in the image of the person dying alone without a soul left to care about them. Or the even new and more updated version, I guess, which is the pressure for those older to be euthanized so that no one has to take care of them. Loneliness is perhaps the most bitter of all feelings. Is there really anything worse than that all-consuming gnawing feeling? Speaking from personal experience, I'd say no, there's nothing worse than that. Yet our modern lifestyles have made this feeling the norm, and we wonder why everyone's killing each other, killing themselves, failing to form stable families, marrying themselves, or constantly on psych meds or in talk therapy. And so Pride Month comes in with its devilish allure of finally feeling loved and feeling like you're seen and that you belong. It's a heady offer. Just look at this New York Magazine headline about how the highest paid female CEO in America used to be a man. Well, guess what? He's still a man. What normal middle-aged guy would choose to humiliate himself in this way for all the world to see unless he wanted to find a way to quiet the gnawing feeling of loneliness inside him? 
And then for Glamour magazine, you have a pregnant woman dressed like a man and using testosterone to gain a more masculine appearance to pretend he's a preg she's a pregnant man. But she's not fooling anyone either. The worst part is that studies show transitioning does not ameliorate the insanely high suicide rates of those with gender dysphoria. The acceptance and love they think they're getting is a false illusion of what God truly offers. But to take up that offer, one must first deny themselves and pick up their cross. And therein lays the reason why so much of Christendom has fallen in the face of mass material wealth accumulation. Because why deny yourself anything when the devil's on your shoulder telling you you can have it all? But again, our suicide and drug epidemics prove otherwise. 